Hello guys, welcome to our pet online class number 11. Uh, we're still going strong, we still have like a month left. Uh, let's keep it up, let's just fight through this school season, okay? So, today's class is going to be a little bit different uh, because we have to take a little break. We're gonna take a little break from the student book. So, we're gonna be working mostly on the test book. I'm gonna be explaining it in a little bit, but meanwhile, let's start with the warm up. Okay, so as usual, you're, we're gonna start with some questions you gotta answer in your notebook, so please take that out. And today we're talking about, well, a lot of things, as is in the test book, but our questions are going to be talking about pets. No, not you guys. Actual pets, animals, haha, <laughs> funny, fun joke. Uh, number one, have you or your friends got any pets? Describe a pet you know. Three sentences, please. If you don't have a pet, well, you can describe someone else's pet. I don't know, your grandma's dog, your friend's cat, uh, the bird of the neighbor. You do you. Or if you, ha you don't have a pet right now, but you had one in the past, you can also talk about the pet that you have. Even if it's a turtle, if it's a fish, you can talk about it, right? Number two, if you could have any kind of animal as a pet, what would you have? Uh, of course, we're talking about anything. Imagine that uh, you were suddenly having like a giant house. You can have a tiger, you can have a whale, you can have whatever you want. Think about it. Be creative. And finally, three, are there any animals you think should not be pets? Which ones? Why? So, of course, this is like... Uh, Guess personal question, uh, what do you think about safety of animals, right? Uh, because there's a lot of wild animals just being taken care of as pets, right? So, that's your whole opinion. So, I'm going to give you some examples of what my answers would be. For example, number one, uh, describe a pet you know. Well, of course, as you know, I have a cat. His name is Cookie. So, I'm going to give you an example of what my three sentences look like, right? So, my cat name is Cookie. Because the spots on his back look like chocolate chip cookies. Now he has three on one side. It has one big one on the other side. As you can see, that looks like a cookie. So I named him Cookie, right? Uh, number two. He's very spoiled, naughty cat. He's so naughty. Uh, you can cradle him in your arms and fall asleep. What is cradle? Cradle is a verb referring to when you hold something in your arms. Like a baby. So, yeah. He's a baby cat, basically. No matter how old he is, he's just a baby, big baby. He will just come and want to be pet and carry it and be in your arms all the time. He's so needy. And my third sentence would be, He often wakes me up at 7 a.m. by hitting me with his head and purring. Which is really, really cute if it wasn't at 7 a.m. I don't know you guys, but with this whole pandemic, I am the more nocturnal that I have the most nocturnal I've ever been, honestly. I will sleep late, wake up late, and 7 a.m. is just not my time. It's, it's very annoying, but what do you do with kids, with cats? <laughs> so, number two, my answer would be an owl. If I could have any anim kind of animal as pet, I would have an owl. Owls are cool. Um, birds, they fly very silently, they're beautiful, and they're very smart, so yeah. And three, are there any animals you think should not be pets? Probably animals in danger of extinction, like tigers and like rare parrots. I'm very, very um, against having those animals as pets because they are in danger of extinction. You're not doing them any really good by taking them out of their natural habitats and just having them in your house just because. So. Those are my three answers. Uh, please pause here and take time to make your own answers, all right? All right, now for the next part of our warm up, I'm just going to be explaining what are we going to do this class. So, first, uh, we're gonna need your test book. That is a test book. If you didn't remember, test book, the white one. Uh, Look for it in your backpack, wherever it is. If you don't have it, uh, don't worry. Uh, you're going to see how we work it. I'm going to show you all the texts, all the audios, everything that you need over here. And 
What we're going to also use is Google Classroom. Now, I think two-thirds, two-thirds, yeah, two-thirds of the class are in Google Classroom. I have like 70-something students and you are 140, 130, then it's just only half, never mind. <laughs> half of you are in the Google Classroom, uh, so it should be all of you, right? Even more as the way we're going to work it, uh, you don't exactly need, the, need your book, but I recommend you have it around. Why? Because we are going to be seeing the exercises here. I'm going to help you out a little bit, explain how you should do it, uh, maybe give you one or two answers around there. And then in the Google Classroom group, I am going to be putting there a task. It says we're going to be called Reading Practice Quiz 5 and Listening Practice Quiz 4, right? So, basically, what these tasks are going to be, you're just going to click it, and there is a little form. It's going to say, you know, just input your answers from the exercise done this class. So, you are supposed to be pausing and doing this. This is not homework. This is just part of your class. You're just going to be doing it, and when you are finished, you're going to go to the Google Classroom. You're going to click there, and when you click there, you have a little format. As you can see, there is no images, there is nothing. This is like an answer sheet. If you remember um, the enlace tests and any other tests that you have gotten that you fill the bubbles, this is something similar. We don't have the questions themselves, we don't have the context, you just have there, and all I want you to do is just fill in the answers, you know? C, C, V, V, C, D, F, G, H, whatever else, right? And that is going to allow us to give you a little bit of feedback to get back at you. Uh, now, because this is an exercise, as you can see here, this is an exercise that we are going to be doing, handling this classroom, uh, Thursdays, Saturdays. The deadline to enter these answers is going to be uh, Monday, almost Tuesday, because, of course, it belongs to this class, right? This is not homework, so I hope that you are answering along with me and that we have this on time you all participate we are all good okay so that being explained let's start with a test book all right so the first one we're going to tackle we're going to pick up where we left off a little bit which is the listening part one to four of the practice test number four. We're talking about pages 91 to 95. So please open it up, page 91, because that's where we're going to start. Now, for listening part one, remember you have one question, seven of them actually, seven questions, and for each question you choose the answer. Now you have one audio per each question. You have seven audios in total, right? Now, of course, you always have to pay attention in these ones because they're going to mention everything, right? They're going to mention all the options. You just have to understand the question, what are they asking of you, and choose the correct answer because they're always going to try to trick you, right? They're going to, for example, number one, how is the girl getting to school? They're going to mention the bike. They're going to mention the car. They're going to mention the bus. But only one is correct. All right? So we'll play the audio, and you're going to be answering in your book, then passing it onto the website form. Look at the three pictures for question one now. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear each recording twice. One. How is the girl getting to school? Could you drive me to school today, Dad? Sorry, Tina. I haven't got the car. Your mum's taken it. You'll have to take the bus today. You know I hate taking the bus, Dad. It takes ages and it costs too much. I'd rather go by bike. Don't be silly. It's freezing cold outside. Here's some money. Now run or you'll miss it. Well, maybe you're right. It is cold today. Thanks, Dad. See you later.
Now listen again. Could you drive me to school today, Dad? Sorry, Tina. I haven't got the car. Your mum's taken it. You'll have to take the bus today. You know I hate taking the bus, Dad. It takes ages and it costs too much. I'd rather go by bike. Don't be silly. It's freezing cold outside. Here's some money. Now run or you'll miss it. Well, maybe you're right. It is cold today. Thanks, Dad. See you later. Two. What did the girl forget? Can we use your laptop to work on our history project? I've left mine at home. OK, no problem. We have to hand it in next week, so we'd better get started. But have you got a CD to save the project on when we've finished? Yes, I've got two in my bag. I don't use CDs much these days, but that's what the teacher wants. Good thing I remembered to bring them. Great. Before we start, can I use your mobile to call my mum and let her know we're at the library? I left mine charging at home and forgot to bring it with me. No problem. Here you are. Thanks, Jake. You're a star. Now listen again. Can we use your laptop to work on our history project? I've left mine at home. OK, no problem. We have to hand it in next week, so we'd better get started. But have you got a CD to save the project on when we've finished? Yes, I've got two in my bag. I don't use CDs much these days, but that's what the teacher wants. Good thing I remembered to bring them. Great. Before we start, can I use your mobile to call my mum? and let her know we're at the library. I left mine charging at home and forgot to bring it with me. No problem. Here you are. Thanks, Jake. You're a star. Three. What was the final score? The Spanish team lost to United last Saturday after a long and exciting match. Rodriguez scored the only two goals in the first half, putting the home team way ahead. A disappointing score for the 4,000 United fans who had travelled to Spain to watch their team. The Barcelona players tried hard to score again in the second half, but they were out of luck. United scored three spectacular goals in the last ten minutes. United fans went crazy at their 2-3 victory. What a match! Now listen again. The Spanish team lost to United last Saturday after a long and exciting match. Rodriguez scored the only two goals in the first half, putting the home team way ahead. A disappointing score for the 4,000 United fans who had travelled to Spain to watch their team. The Barcelona players tried hard to score again in the second half, but they were out of luck. United scored three spectacular goals in the last ten minutes. United fans went crazy at their 2-3 victory. What a match! Four. What are they going to play? I see you've brought your rackets, Tracy. Do you fancy playing tennis? I'm tired of sunbathing. Me too! I wouldn't mind a game, but I can't find the ball. That's a pity. How about playing cards? My mum taught me a new game the other day. It's quite easy. Cards? No, thanks. Can we play that new game you have on your phone? The one you downloaded? OK. Oh, no, we can't. I forgot to charge it. Sorry. So I'll teach you to play mum's card game. You'll like it, I promise. Now listen again. I see you've brought your rackets, Tracy. Do you fancy playing tennis? 
I'm tired of sunbathing. Me too. I wouldn't mind a game, but I can't find the ball. That's a pity. How about playing cards? My mum taught me a new game the other day. It's quite easy. Cards? No, thanks. Can we play that new game you have on your phone? The one you downloaded? OK. Oh, no, we can't. I forgot to charge it. Sorry. So I'll teach you to play Mum's card game. You'll like it. I promise. Five. Where will the boy do the English course? Mrs Johnson, I'm going to do an English course this summer in the UK. Do you think I should go to London, Edinburgh or Oxford? I've heard about courses in all of them. Hmm, that's a difficult choice. London's such a huge city and it's always busy. Edinburgh's smaller than London. And I think people there are very friendly. But it might be a bit cold for you. So what about Oxford? Well, I've already been to Oxford and I'm not keen on cooler weather. Also, I'd really like to go to all the museums in London. The course lasts four weeks, so maybe I could visit Oxford and Edinburgh at the weekends. Well, that's a long way to travel for a weekend. But it sounds like you've made your decision. I hope you get a place on the course. Now listen again. Mrs Johnson, I'm going to do an English course this summer in the UK. Do you think I should go to London, Edinburgh or Oxford? I've heard about courses in all of them. Hmm, that's a difficult choice. London's such a huge city and it's always busy. Edinburgh's smaller than London and I think people there are very friendly. But it might be a bit cold for you. So what about Oxford? Well, I've already been to Oxford and I'm not keen on cooler weather. Also, I'd really like to go to all the museums in London. The course lasts four weeks. So maybe I could visit Oxford and Edinburgh at the weekends. Well, that's a long way to travel for a weekend. But it sounds like you've made your decision. I hope you get a place on the course. Six. What does the boy need help with? Mum, can you help me? I was showing the photos we took in Paris to Grandpa, and now my computer is stuck. Why don't you ask your brother? I don't want to do something and make things worse. He's already tried to help me, but he couldn't fix it. Please, Mum. OK, let me have a look. There we go. That's sorted. You should be able to open the files again now. Thanks, Mum. Don't turn it off. I'm going to help Grandpa choose a photo to print. Now listen again. Mum, can you help me? I was showing the photos we took in Paris to Grandpa and now my computer is stuck. Why don't you ask your brother? I don't want to do something and make things worse. He's already tried to help me, but he couldn't fix it. Please, Mum. OK, let me have a look. There we go. That's sorted. You should be able to open the files again now. Thanks, Mum. Don't turn it off. I'm going to help Grandpa choose a photo to print. Seven. What is the girl going to wear to the party? Where are you going, Sissy? To Betty's party. It was her birthday on Monday. What do you think of this dress? Does it look too formal? I was going to wear that skirt I bought last week, but it's in the washing machine. What about your black trousers? I've been wearing them for two days. I can't wear the same thing again. 
Well then, you look fine as you are. Have fun. Thanks, Michael. You're the best brother in the world. Now listen again. Where are you going, Sissy? To Betty's party. It was her birthday on Monday. What do you think of this dress? Does it look too formal? I was going to wear that skirt I bought last week, but it's in the washing machine. What about your black trousers? I've been wearing them for two days. I can't wear the same thing again. Well then, you look fine as you are. Have fun. Thanks, Michael. You're the best brother in the world. All right. So that concludes our listening part one. Let's continue to listening part two. Part two. We have six questions about an interview, and of course, you have to choose what is the correct option: A, B, C, and according to what you hear, of course. Now, in these ones, you have to be pay a lot of attention to exactly what they mean, right? Because as always, they're gonna mention all of them, but uh, sometimes they will say something and then say the negative of it. So, have to pay attention on that. All right, let's start the audio. Part two. Now turn to part two, questions eight to thirteen. You will hear a school reporter. Interviewing Paul Reynolds, a journalist who wrote an article on unusual or dangerous jobs. For each question, choose the correct answer: A, B, or C. You now have forty-five seconds to look at the questions for part two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Paul Reynolds, journalist for News Today, is here to tell us about his most recent article, Strange Jobs. Hello, Paul. Hi. The first unusual job you mention in your article is a greetings card writer. What do these writers actually do? Well, they write the message that we see either on the front of greetings cards or on the inside. Some writers are also designers, so they also design the card or even draw the picture on it. How interesting! Is it a difficult job? There aren't many words on most cards, so people think they're easy to write. The truth is that it's quite complicated. These days, people like to send greetings cards for a huge range of reasons. The most popular are for birthdays and other celebrations. Then there are different kinds of well-wishing cards. For example, to send to people who are ill or even taking an exam. The writer has to think of a wish that is original, but also something that most people would say. The card shouldn't have too many words. It should be clear and funny, if it's a funny card, of course. I see. And how much does a greetings card writer get paid? With each verse or wish, the writer could earn from ten to five hundred euros. Card writers don't get very rich, but the money isn't bad if you think it's just a couple of lines. Not at all. And what about the next job, the window cleaner? Ah yes. Did you know that this is the most dangerous job? Why is that, Paul? Because those who do this job sometimes wash windows of very tall buildings. Imagine the window cleaners in big city centers. They have to clean all the high buildings, even the tallest skyscrapers. Of course, they have protection, and they don't work if it's too windy or if it's raining. So, can anyone become a window cleaner if they want to? 
No, you have to be quite strong because it's a tiring physical job. You don't have to be tall, but you need to be good at climbing. So you mustn't be afraid of heights. Of course. Do window cleaners usually work long hours? Yes, most window cleaners start early in the morning and work until the late afternoon. They need light to see what they're doing and to clean the windows properly, so they stop when it gets dark. Thank you very much, Paul. My pleasure. Now listen again. Paul Reynolds, journalist for News Today, is here to tell us about his most recent article, Strange Jobs. Hello, Paul. Hi. The first unusual job you mention in your article is a greetings card writer. What do these writers actually do? Well, they write the message that we see either on the front of greetings cards or on the inside. Some writers are also designers, so they also design the card or even draw the picture on it. How interesting! Is it a difficult job? There aren't many words on most cards, so people think they're easy to write. The truth is that it's quite complicated. These days, people like to send greetings cards for a huge range of reasons. The most popular are for birthdays and other celebrations. Then there are different kinds of well-wishing cards. For example, to send to people who are ill or even taking an exam. The writer has to think of a wish that is original, but also something that most people would say. The card shouldn't have too many words. It should be clear and funny, if it's a funny card, of course. I see. And how much does a greetings card writer get paid? With each verse or wish, the writer could earn from 10 to 500 euros. Card writers don't get very rich, but the money isn't bad if you think it's just a couple of lines. Not at all. And what about the next job, the window cleaner? Ah, yes. Did you know that this is the most dangerous job? Why is that, Paul? Because those who do this job sometimes wash windows of very tall buildings. Imagine the window cleaners in big city centres. They have to clean all the high buildings, even the tallest skyscrapers. Of course, they have protection and they don't work if it's too windy or if it's raining. So, can anyone become a window cleaner if they want to? No, you have to be quite strong because it's a tiring physical job. You don't have to be tall, but you need to be good at climbing. So you mustn't be afraid of heights. Of course. Do window cleaners usually work long hours? Yes, most window cleaners start early in the morning and work until the late afternoon. They need light to see what they're doing and to clean the windows properly, so they stop when it gets dark. Thank you very much, Paul. My pleasure. All right, so let's continue then to part number three. Now, listening part number three is, I think, for some the hardest because we have empty spots. You have to write what you hear they say to complete the sentences. Now, remember, these are always short. They're not going to make you write a long, long answer. It's only like three words max, the usual. Um, for the way you're going to answer it in your in the form... I recommend, well, I recommend you, you are going to do only, no capital letters, only small letters, please, and be careful how you spell things, all right? So, that being said, let's play the audio. Part 3. Now turn to part 3. Questions 14 to 19. You will hear a weather report on the radio. For each question, fill in the missing information in the numbered space. You now have 20 seconds to look at part three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi there. Next on Teen Radio, let's have a quick look at the weather. 
This week so far has been very warm, but from tomorrow, Thursday, I'm afraid this is going to change. It's going to get a lot more cloudy on Thursday morning, and that cloud's going to remain throughout the day. You can forget about the lovely days we've been having, as temperatures are going to drop by 6 to 10 degrees. In the north, it's going to stay below 12 degrees during the day, whereas in the south, it'll be a little bit warmer. Particularly in the southwest, temperatures could reach 15 degrees at midday, with Thursday night being a bit cooler, around 13 degrees. From the early hours of Friday morning, there's going to be heavy rain over much of the country. However, it'll have dried up by the evening, but it'll still be quite cold, so don't forget to take a jacket with you if you're going out anywhere. Now let's see how the weekend looks. It's certainly going to be a few degrees warmer and brighter. Saturday will be a sunny spring day with hardly any clouds, but Sunday won't be quite as pleasant. It's not going to rain. We can expect another sunny day with temperatures a little higher than average for April, but strong winds will be blowing from the north. If you're thinking about going for a bike ride on Sunday, be extremely careful. Road conditions could be dangerous because of this. It'll be a great day for windsurfing, though. Whatever you do, take care and have a great time. Now listen again. Hi there. Next on Teen Radio, let's have a quick look at the weather. This week so far has been very warm, but from tomorrow, Thursday, I'm afraid this is going to change. It's going to get a lot more cloudy on Thursday morning, and that cloud's going to remain throughout the day. You can forget about the lovely days we've been having, as temperatures are going to drop by 6 to 10 degrees. In the north, it's going to stay below 12 degrees during the day, whereas in the south, it'll be a little bit warmer. Particularly in the southwest, temperatures could reach 15 degrees at midday, with Thursday night being a bit cooler, around 13 degrees. From the early hours of Friday morning, there's going to be heavy rain over much of the country. However, it'll have dried up by the evening, but it'll still be quite cold, so don't forget to take a jacket with you if you're going out anywhere. Now let's see how the weekend looks. It's certainly going to be a few degrees warmer and brighter. Saturday will be a sunny spring day with hardly any clouds, but Sunday won't be quite as pleasant. It's not going to rain. We can expect another sunny day with temperatures a little higher than average for April, but strong winds will be blowing from the north. If you're thinking about going for a bike ride on Sunday, be extremely careful. Road conditions could be dangerous because of this. It'll be a great day for windsurfing, though. Whatever you do, Take care and have a great time. All right, that was quite fast for part three. So let's go to part four. Part four, or final part, I think is the easiest because it's just true or false. Remember, A, it's true or yes, or in B is no or false. Okay, so let's listen. Part four. Now turn to part four. Questions 20 to 25. Look at the six sentences for this part. You will hear a conversation between a girl, Rebecca, and a boy, Steve, who live in a small town. Decide if each sentence is correct or incorrect. If it is correct, choose the letter A for yes. If it is not correct, choose the letter B for no. You now have 20 seconds to look at the questions for part four. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. How was your weekend, Steve? Did you go out at all? I was going to. I planned to go to the cinema to watch Scary City, but... What cinema? 
They've just closed the only cinema in Amersham. I know, silly. My mum was going to drive me into London, but we had to change our plans at the last minute. Grandad wasn't feeling well, so mum had to get the doctor to come and see him. Luckily, it was nothing serious. After that, it was too late to go to the cinema, and I just stayed at home and played Wizards and Dragons on the computer with Patrick. Not again. Aren't you tired of playing that game? It's so boring and really old. My sister has just bought a new one. I think it's called Fantastic Five. We've only played it once, but it's not bad. Yes, I've heard it's quite good. I hope she'll let me play it sometime. I'm sure she will next time you come round here. Anyway, are you doing anything tomorrow morning? We've got the day off school, so let's get out and enjoy it. I don't know. There's not much to do in this place. I wish Amersham had a better sports centre. It'd be great if we had a modern gym or even an indoor basketball court, but we don't, of course. Yes, I know what you mean. But there are still lots of things we can do outdoors. We're lucky that way. Hey, let's go cycling tomorrow and have a picnic in the park. If it's not raining, of course. That's a great idea, Rebecca. But it'll have to be after eleven o'clock. I've got to finish my geography homework and take some books back to the library. Can you bring your camera? I'm afraid mine's broken. Okay, I'll bring mine. Shall we say half past eleven at the school? Half past eleven sounds perfect, but maybe it's better to meet in front of the museum because we won't have so many busy roads to cross. Then we can ride straight into the park and have lunch there. Great! I'll see you there. Now listen again. How was your weekend, Steve? Did you go out at all? I was going to. I planned to go to the cinema to watch Scary City, but what cinema? They've just closed the only cinema in Amersham. I know, silly. My mum was going to drive me into London, but we had to change our plans at the last minute. Grandad wasn't feeling well, so mum had to get the doctor to come and see him. Luckily, it was nothing serious. After that, it was too late to go to the cinema, and I just stayed at home and played Wizards and Dragons on the computer with Patrick. Not again! Aren't you tired of playing that game? It's so boring and really old. My sister has just bought a new one. I think it's called Fantastic Five. We've only played it once, but it's not bad. Yes, I've heard it's quite good. I hope she'll let me play it sometime. I'm sure she will next time you come round here. Anyway, are you doing anything tomorrow morning? We've got the day off school, so let's get out and enjoy it. I don't know. There's not much to do in this place. I wish Amersham had a better sports centre. It'd be great if we had a modern gym or even an indoor basketball court. But we don't, of course. Yes, I know what you mean. But there are still lots of things we can do outdoors. We're lucky that way. Hey, let's go cycling tomorrow and have a picnic in the park. If it's not raining, of course. That's a great idea, Rebecca. But it'll have to be after eleven o'clock. I've got to finish my geography homework and take some books back to the library. Can you bring your camera? I'm afraid mine's broken. Okay, I'll bring mine. Shall we say half past eleven at the school? Half past eleven sounds perfect, but maybe it's better to meet in front of the museum because we won't have so many busy roads to cross. Then we can ride straight into the park and have lunch there. Great! I'll see you there. All right. So that concludes our listening. I hope you have all the answers. So. Let's continue to reading. So reading, we're gonna jump past writing and speaking, and we're gonna go to pages uh, 90, 98 to one hundred and six. We have five parts of reading, if you remember. So let's get started. Page ninety-eight. 
Now, page 98, we start with reading part one. If you remember, we have five little readings, and of course, you have three options for each. What does it say is the main question. So, if in any of the, let's say, exercises, you don't see a question, for example, number one just says A, B, C, the question is the general, what does it say? So, what does exercise one say? A, B, or C. Now, remember, you have to be very precise. It's not what you think it says, but what it actually says. You have to be very factual. If you can underline where it says the answer, the better. Now, you're going to pause here and take time to answer. If you have your phone nearby, I recommend you put a chronometer or, or an alarm, something that tells you when time stops so you continue, right? And you should take about five minutes, okay? Alright, so that being said, we go to exercise two. Exercise two, if you remember, it's matching parts. We will match five people with ten readings. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, ten readings. Now, the tricky part is that, of course, it's a lot of reading. A lot of reading. So, we have the people first in your pages, because it's two pages. You're going to notice you have first the people. And then you have the options you can match them with. So what I recommend you, always read what's first. So first you want to read the options and then you want to start reading whatever you can pair them with, right? So first read the people, then the texts. Now, also I recommend underlining on the people what is the most important thing for each of them. So when you are reading the museums, you just go, oh, here is the keyword. You know, you're looking for the keywords. You're not reading everything in detail. But for example, number one says uh, learning about technology, inventions, likes to try things out, understand how they work, and then looking at pictures and models of them. The keywords are technology, inventions, understand how they work. And then you start you do the same for all the other people, then you start hitting over here, and whenever you see inventions, how it works, or technology, you can find those keywords in the little options and then join them with it. Okay? So, please pause here and take the time to answer. I would put 10 minutes in your chronometer, so please take the time. Okay, let's continue to part number three. Part number three is one of the easiest, again, uh, true, false, true, false, true, false option. Remember, A is always going to be true, B is always going to be false. Now, very important that you read the options, then you read the text, okay? Read what you need to look for, so when you are reading the text, you're just not reading the text, then reading the options, then reading the text again, and so on and so forth, right? You just read all the options, now you know what you need to find, you go and read the text, okay? Now please pause here and take time to answer, you should take about 7 minutes, so a bit more than the first one, but a bit less than the second one, so go ahead. All right, now exercise four, part four, we have a text and then five simple questions. Now, the difference here is that the questions are a bit more complex, you know, how, why, what might they say? You have to infer a little bit about reasons, you know, think a bit more about it. Still, the answers are always going to be within the text itself. Now, I recommend you always try to go paragraph by paragraph. In this case, we have five paragraphs, five questions. So, usually, question one is going to give you about paragraph one, question two about paragraph two, question three about paragraph three, etc., etc. Except, unless, for example, in the first one, in this case, it says, why has they been written this text? So, you can find it in the first paragraph, or you can find it all throughout the text. It's just the meaning of all of it. Why? The purpose. So, you have to read all of it. In this case, the reading we have it first, then we have the questions. That's what I recommend. Please read the, fir the, the reading first, then check out the questions. So, you have to read carefully, then 
from what you read, try to answer the questions. Please pause here and take time to answer. I'll sh I recommend like 10 minutes. This is another large one, so take your time. Okay, so finally we have part five. Part five is the fastest, I guess, to answer, but also one of the trickiest for a lot of people because we have spaces and you have to fit one of the words in each space. Now, 26 has four options that are different from 27. You have to go, what I recommend is that you start reading, you read the whole sentence, so for example, they are mammals just like us, then 26, so are their relatives whales. You have to read what is before the gap and after the gap. And then you read the options along the gap. For example, there are mammals just like us, but so are the relatives, and so are the relatives, like, so are the relatives, to, so are the relatives. What is the correct answer? What sounds better? What is more grammatically correct? Because, of course, all of them have a, a different use. For example, I can easily discard D because two always goes at the end of sentences. So it's not the end of the sentence, it's in the middle. I cannot use two. D is discarded. So by that process, you can go sentence by sentence, reading and answering along the time. Instead of having to read everything, then answer everything, waste more time, you just go pair to pair. Okay? This should take you 10 minutes. So please pause here and take the time to answer. Okay, that being answered, uh, that will be everything for our test book this time. We are going to continue with a bit of a worksheet. We are going to be practicing what we have seen so far in this unit. So I'll leave you to that. Hello, guys. So today I'm going to explain you your homework worksheets. Well, as you know, we have already finished unit number nine. So today we're having two grammar quizzes. What are they about? Well, remember last week we checked the differences between defining relative clauses and non-defining relative clauses. Remember, defining relative clauses complete the meaning of the sentence and the sentence is not clear without the defining relative clause. For example, the movie which I'm going to watch is called The Bachelor. On the other hand, the non-defining relative clauses, they just give us extra information. And the sentence is clear without the defining relative clause. For example, gravity, coma, which won seven Oscars, coma, was directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Remember, these sentences need comas to separate the non-defining relative clauses. If you need extra help, Remember, you have your notes, so you can take out your notebook, you can check your notes, you can ask us anything you need. We have Google Classroom for that, so we'll be there. Now, what are you doing, guys? Well, in the description of this video, you are going to find these two links. One of them is for non-defining relative clauses, and the other one is for defining relative clauses. You are going to answer both of them. But right now, I'm going to give you the example with the first one. So you click on the link. Now that you click on the link, you are going to be sent to this website. Ready? Now it says, non-defining relative clauses. Complete the sentences with the correct relative pronoun. For example, number one says, the painting, coma, was finished in 1850, coma, is one of the most representative works of, the, of that time. What is the answer? Which, blank, or who? Well, in this case, you are going to choose which. You are going to complete the eight sentences. And when you're finished, you are going to click here, finish. Then you are going to click on 
email my answers to my teacher here. Enter your full name. Well, you are not going to enter your full name. You are going to enter your two last names and one of your names. For example, in my case will be Dominguez Ramirez, I'm sorry, Ramirez Selene. Then it says level and group. Here in this part, you are going to write your schedule. For example, Monday, Thursday, from four to six. And in school subject, you are going to write Sene Pet. Enter your teacher's email or code. Here, guys, be careful with the code. It has to be well written. It's O two U six Q F G O M P. You are going to find this code in the description of the video too. When you have this information, you are going to click on send. Your answers can be sent to your teacher. Good luck. You say close. And here you have the grade. Mm, I'm sorry, just got one. Well, when you finish with this one, you click in the other link. After you finish both, we are going to receive your, your grades and don't worry, that's it. Now, if you have any question, guys, ask us, send us a message on Google Classroom and we're, we're, we're going to help you. Goodbye, good luck. Hello guys, I'm Teacher Crow. Let's check your homework. Okay, it was workbook page 104 and 105. It's 90, a bit of culture. Or says one, read the sentences and complete the chart. If it is defining relative clause, non defining relative clause, or it doesn't have relative clause. The number one, I got my driver's license two years ago and it expires when I'm 21. It is no, it has no relative clause. Number two, our teacher usually wears a red tie and it's always laughing. It doesn't have a relative clause. Number three, our teacher who usually wears a red tie is always laughing. No, Non-defining relative clause. Four, the driver's license that I got two years ago expires when I'm 21. It's a defining relative clause. Five, the teacher that usually wears a red tie is always laughing. It's also a defining relative clause. And number six is an undefining relative clause. Two years ago, I got my driver's license, which expires when I'm 21. Okay, exercise two. Choose what the words bold refer to in the sentences. Number one, the storm that knocked down Several trees in our garden last year also caused a lot of damage in our town. It's the storm. The storm that. Number two, my friends thought the cake which I made last night was delicious. It's letter C, the cake, not my friends, the cake. Three, the guide who had already been to the White Mountains was talking to the boys about their next trip. It's talking about the guide. Four, my friends who studied anthropology got a job in Belize. It's my friend. Five, you should talk to your teacher who can always give you ideas to help you study better. It's C, your teacher. Six, there's always a lot of traffic on the seven bridge which connects England and Wales. be it seven bridge. Seven, the hotel that we stayed on our trip to the Sedona was on a golf course. The hotel. On eight, my sister Amal, who was, 
who has just sent me an email has gone to Spain with her friends. Letter B, my sister Amal. Esto es true. Complete the second sentence so that it means the same as the first. There's only one word. One. We watch the show that show every week. I love it. I love that show which we watch every week. Two. We visit a seaside town in England. It is on the northeast coast. We visit a seaside in England that which is on the northeast coast. Both are correct. That or which? Three. A detective solved the crime. She asked me questions. The detective that who solved the crime asked me questions. Four. That valley, a park in California, Nevada, is the hottest and driest national park in the U.S. That valley, which is a park in California, Nevada, is the hottest and driest national park in the U.S. Five. Varanasi is a beautiful city in India. It is on the Ganges River. A beautiful Indian city is Varanasi, which is on the Ganges River. 6. The mayor of our town used to be a baseball player. She is very popular. The mayor of our town, who used to be a baseball player, is very popular. Exercise 4. Underline the relative pronouns that can be replaced by that. 1. My friend who lives in Oregon invited us to go walking along the Pacific Trail. Who can be replaced by that? My friend that lives in Oregon. Both are correct. Number 2. Yesterday's concert, which was the last one this year, had the biggest audience ever. Which cannot be replaced by that. 3. The man who was sitting across me was very quiet. Who can be replaced by that? 4. The seafood which we had at the restaurant near the beach was delicious. Which can be replaced by that? 5. My mom who, was all, who has always been interested in art went to Florence, Italy last month. Who cannot be replaced by that? Six, our friends who moved to Singapore email us every week. Who can, can be replaced? And seven, she gave all the money to Angela who decided to spend it on a car. It cannot be replaced.